Good morning. This is Solo Missionary Baptist Church located in Rochmont, North Carolina. Today is September 6, 2020. The Sunday school lesson for this morning is entitled God Provides Manna and Quail. The book we will be using is the Adult Bible Class Series from Union Gospel Press. My name is Charlotte Timberlake and I'm your Sunday school teacher for this morning. The Golden Text Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6.35 Today's aim, facts, to see that the Lord provides for the needs of his people. Principle, to understand how God taught his children to obey him. Application, to personally learn obedience from God's work in our life. Introducing the lesson. Israel had little idea about what God expected of them. They were not sure who Moses was or if they should listen to him. If they were to survive the walk to the promised land, they would have to learn to honor and obey God. Developing the lesson. Number one, Israel complains against God and his servant, Exodus 16, 2 through 3. Israel needed food, but they were used to the food of their old life in Egypt, so they compared their lifestyle of freedom to their lifestyle of bondage. We might doubt that slaves were ever given bread to the full. Still, they proclaimed their wish that they had died in Egypt. But God is a glorious God and the provision he was about to make for his people far exceeded their fare under slavery. Number two, God tells his answer to Moses, Exodus 16, four through eight. God explained the plan to Moses and Moses communicated it to Israel. Moses is particularly careful to point out that the people's murmurings were not against him and Aaron, but against the Lord. Number three, God gives the answer to Israel, Exodus 16, nine through 12. When Aaron conveyed the plan to Israel, they looked toward the wilderness and saw the glory of the Lord. This was not just a beautiful sunset, but a revelation of the Shekinah glory of God, a special manifestation of his presence. They were to understand that God was answering their complaints. The underlying meaning of this exercise was to tell Israel that he was their sovereign God and their provider. It may be that most of our life experiences are intended to convince us that our God is our sovereign and our provider. Number four, God's miraculous answer to their practical need. Exodus 16. 13 through 15. Dwelling on the flesh plots and bread of Egypt did nothing to satisfy Israel's hunger. God flooded their camp with quail that evening. They had all they could eat of quail. The manna they picked the next morning and for the rest of the 40 year journey was good food. It must have been a nutritious diet. Let us remember that we may not know how God provides, but he is our sovereign God who knows what we need and will make provision for us. We will now move on to the questions in the back of the lesson. Question number one. When did the Israelites arrive at the wilderness of sin? Answer. The Israelites arrived at the wilderness of sin one month after they had left Egypt. Question number two. What did the people claim would have been better for them than being in the wilderness? Answer, the people said it would have been better for them to die in Egypt by the hand of the Lord than to starve in the wilderness. Question number three, what charge did the Israelites bring against Moses and Aaron? Answer, the people charged Moses and Aaron with deliberately bringing them into the wilderness to die of hunger there. Question number four. 
How did God address the people's complaint? Answer, God responded without any indication that Moses or anyone else spoke to him. The Lord said he would rain bread from heaven for them. He would freely give them a special bread that would satisfy them. Question number five. In what way would the bread from heaven test the people? Answer. While this bread was a gracious gift of God, it would also serve as a test to show whether or not they would obey the law he would give them. It was not just a test to see if they could follow instructions, but a test to see if their hearts were inclined to be his covenant people. Question number six. In what sense had the people murmured against God himself and not just Moses and Aaron? Answer. They had spoken against Moses and Aaron who were merely representatives of the Lord. Their complaints were actually against God. He, not Moses, had led them to this place. Question number seven. What assurance would the divine provision give the Israelites? Answer. The Lord then spoke to Moses again, telling him to reassure the people that in the evening they would eat meat and in the morning they would have an abundance of bread. Question number eight. What kind of meat did God provide? Answer. God provided quail. Question number nine, when did the bread arrive? Answer, the promised bread arrived for the first time the next morning. When the dew had evaporated, the Israelites found a strange substance on the ground. What did the people call it? Answer, they called it manna. Question number 10, how long did this blessing continue? Answer, God's miraculous provision of manna continued for the entire 40 years Israel was in the wilderness. Okay, let's go over our practical points. Number one, grumbling companions will test good character, possibly revealing character faults. Exodus 16.2 Number two, trust God in trials, remembering what he has already done for you. Verse three. Number three, God's provision is not limited by man's circumstances, verses four through five. Number four, the Lord is merciful despite our sin, but we should not murmur against him or his leaders, verses six through eight. Number five, God often reveals his glory most clearly in times of adversity verses nine through 10. Number six, as God provides, he reminds believers that he is who he says he is and does what he says he will do, verses 11 through 12. Number seven, God is faithful to meet his people's spiritual and physical needs, verses 13 through 15. In conclusion, God provides for his people and we need to trust God to meet our needs. God provided quail and manna for the people of Israel in the desert. In providing food for his people, God showed his power. There is no circumstance too difficult for God. No matter what we face in life, we are never out of his reach. God didn't provide the Israelites with an, with an enormous amount of food to last them months at a time. Instead, he provided what they needed on a daily and nightly basis to get them through the day. This teaches us to depend on him for everything every day. God provided for the people in order to keep them alive, sure, but he also had a greater, greater purpose. He wanted the people to recognize him as God. Let us look at Exodus 16, 12, which reads, 
I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. By providing for us, God meets our needs and also reveals himself to us. It is because of his provision that we know that he exists and that he loves us. And another thing, we must refrain from murmuring. The Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron. In complaining against Moses and Aaron, the people were really rebelling against God himself. Murmuring and complaining against God's appointed leaders is a sign of rebellion and a lack of faith. But God's patient response to the murmurings of his people demonstrated his unconditional love. He reminded them of his love and grace through his promise to supply them food. As believers, we must refrain from murmuring and instead thank God for his grace and his mercy. If we can only bring ourselves to trust God, he will work it out according to his will. It may not always be in the form we ask for, but the answer many times is greater than we deserve. The Lord provided for the Israelites back then, and he provides for us now. Will you trust him? This will conclude the lesson for this morning. Thank you for listening.